So we get into this scene where they go into this apartment and they're basically looking at the police report. They're laying out all the pictures. They are re-canvassing the apartment for new clues to find out where it could have been bungled. And they realized right off the bat that the case was kind of half-assed. And they do all of this using the word fuck. <laughs> now, go, before you get into it, do you have a favorite fuck from that scene? Because I have a favorite fuck. What's yours? Mine is the one where McNulty is using the tape measure and then kind of snaps back on his finger. He's like, fuck. Like, I like that one because it's a natural one, you know? They look at this police report. They look at the entry and the exit wound. This couldn't have happened the way that it was written up. The victim could have maybe been on their knees. They start trying to figure out height-wise what could have happened to make a bullet go. They do have a really cool shot where they, um, it's quick, but I know mm-hmm. this is the second watch. They have a really cool shot where they zoom into the police report. You see that she's 5'3 and 100 and whatever pounds, but the mm-hmm. height is the key thing because she's only 5'3. And it's funny is they noticed that the hole that was, that was in the window, but they don't put it together just yet until they realize there's a chip on the window set. And they realized where the hole was in the window, that if you were to line the gun up right there and put a 5'3 girl there, the bullet would hit right where the entry wound went and would come out somewhere around the refrigerator, to which they start looking. And they realize there's milk on the ground in one of the pictures, one of the crime photos, which makes them think maybe the refrigerator was open. They open the refrigerator. This is incredible the way that their brain puts these things together. And they ply open what was a sealed up hole in the refrigerator door and find the bullet. Interesting. Yeah. From there, they go outside to where they realize the gun was shot. They do a measurement to find out where the casing could have been. And they dig in the dirt and find the casing. And the whole time, the landlord is just amazed. He's just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So thoughts in, overall about this scene? Um, in general, I love seeing, I guess, what they call day in the life scenes or like in action scenes. So that's showing Bunk and McNulty in action. So I love scenes like that. Um, but yeah, it was just really creative, them restricting the dialogue to the word fuck. So now you have to convey every emotion through that word. It's just, it's just I love scenes like that. It's a real, uh, it shows how good actors they are. Uh, we were joking yesterday. I told you, I said I felt like, uh, it's it's like a scene in Whose Line Is It Anyway, one of those one of those improv scenes where you go, okay, you're a detective, you're a detective, you're the landlord, you're looking for the bullet, and you, the only word you can use is fuck and go. Right, and they did it, and they did it well. <laughs> they made it not campy. So um, I did actually read about this too. Uh, this stems from so the the writer of this, um, David Simon, also wrote Homicide, Life on the Street. He did that, sh- that show on HBO, that miniseries. Yep. And there, Jay Landsman, which is the name of the, of the sergeant, is a real detective, oh, okay. uh, I believe, in Baltimore. We'll see him in a later season as a character, the real Jay Landsman. But he talked about doing a murder scene using only the word fuck, and that's where they, they came up with that idea oh, uh, cool. and put it in there. Yeah, I thought that was really well done. So. 